morning. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal. You're watching the Mem Edge Show, and this is the show where we put you in front of strength in the broader markets. We're always on the lookout for that next big winning stock. And of course, that big stock will come from a winning group. And by winning, I mean an area of the markets that is generally outperforming the rest of the markets. This is where you will want to focus your efforts in un uncovering and identifying these next big winning stocks. And this week, we have uh, quite a bit to cover. And uh, let's go ahead and review what we're going to be looking at today. Of course, we always like to begin with taking a look at the broader markets. You want to make sure that there is strength, that there they are in a healthy position to help carry your stocks higher. So we'll go ahead and do a brief review of the broader markets. And then from there, we'll take a look at where the strength is now. And I'll show you how a very easy way using stockcharts.com that you can quickly get your arms around where the money flows are going toward and again where that strength is. And then from there, today we are going to look at potential turnarounds, getting into a stock earlier. I was had the pleasure on Friday of taking part in the Market Watchers live show with Aaron. And it was during that period that individuals from that were watching were coming in and giving their ticker symbols for stocks that they wanted us to take a look at. And it was a very eye opening for me in a good way in the sense that about 80% of the 10 stocks presented were stocks that were really down and out uh, and potentially turning. So it gave me a sense that there is a desire for viewers to try and get into these stocks early. A lot of my work is these high growth stocks, and I like to see the stocks up a bit higher. But we're going to take a look at where there may be some rotation taking place so we can get you potentially into those stocks earlier. I'll tell you what you need to see before it would be advisable to get into those stocks. And then lastly, knowing when it's time to exit your stock. And this is quite critical. I know that the markets this week, there are heightened concerns about trade war fears and just how far Trump will take things. So with that, it is always important, not just during this heightened trade war fear, period. But it's always important to have a plan. So we're going to review a couple of stocks and identify what characteristics are going to be critical in helping you decide that it is time to exit your stock. So let's go ahead and get started. We're looking here at a daily chart. This is the S&P 500 large cap index. And with this particular index, I like to use simple moving averages. And actually, in looking at any of the broader market indices, these simple moving averages are really going to be your friend, so to speak. They are a wonderful tool. So this green bar here is the line, the green line, is a 21-day simple moving average. And you can see that it is very clearly in an uptrend. And you can also see that it has been really quite effective as far as acting as an area of support. So this is taking us into this period is the end of August. And July and August were actually very, very robust periods for the markets. And the S&P was up over 6% during that two-month period. And as with all things, trees do not grow to the sky. There is going to be a need for the index or a given stock to pull back to that key simple moving average. And in this case, it did pull back to the 21 day simple moving average very clearly and bounced off of that. So this is very, very constructive. We can see that the S&P 500 is very much in a clear cut uptrend following that pullback. And it is very close to approaching this prior high in price. If we do get another new high, that would indeed be very, very bullish for the broader markets. And then let's move on to the NASDAQ. We are also looking at a daily price chart. You can see that the NASDAQ has been not quite as strong. And also, in this case, I am using a 10-day simple moving average. I found the 50-day which is this red line. And your simple moving average really quite simply is a smoothed out version of the prior price history. So that 
course, the 50-day simple moving average is going to be taking the average price over the last 50 days and providing this line. And you can see really how quite clearly it has acted as support during prior pullbacks. And of course, back here, we are in that corrective phase that occurred in the beginning of the markets. All bets were off as far as the indexes finding any kind of support until they came down further to this blue 200-day simple moving average. But let's take a look at where we are more recently here in the NASDAQ. It has struggled a bit. So we can see this pullback here. Again, the NASDAQ was another index that performed really quite well, particularly during the month of August. And a pullback was inherent. It occurred. But we're really not having that spring back, if you will, back to coming closer to prior highs. So what we're going to do is take a look at some of the heavier weighting groupings within the NASDAQ and break those down individually so we can see and perhaps uncover where this potential weakness is cropping up because the NASDAQ has been your leading index, certainly year to date performance wise. It has really provided a number of really outperforming stocks. So in the event that we were to lose this leadership, that of course would be concerning as far as the overall performance of the broader markets. So let's go ahead from here and take a look at stockcharts.com. And what I've done is populated already what is called candle glance. And this is a snapshot view of 12 different, you can populate it with individual stocks. But for our work right here, we want to uncover where the strength is in the broader market. So what I've done is input various sector groups, as well as ETFs that have been really quite strong lately. And the broader market indices are here as well. So we have the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow. And then from here, what we can do, and I'll show you down here where you would input the ticker symbols for those various ETFs. And then from here, you can go ahead and add an indicator. And I like to use that RSI. That's a relative strength indicator. It's going to provide you with that relative outperformance simply by sorting that by descending. So you will get that strength to weakness within these various indices. So initially here, we can see that industrials, this is a two-month price chart and a daily one at that. And we can see that the industrials have really come into favor here. These currently industrials are the strongest subsector grouping. And we can drill down as to why that is. And then healthcare, that's an area that we reviewed last week and it continues to be super strong. Both of these indices are hitting new highs in price, another clear cut signal of strength. And healthcare also has, in addition to growth, it has a number of areas where they're viewed as defensive because regardless of how the economy performs, any outside global trade war fears, there will always be a need for what healthcare has to offer in the way of medical products, drugs, and so forth. And then just as a quick recap within healthcare, a number of these pharmaceutical stocks are really picking up. So if you didn't, I would say, go ahead, take a look at last week's Mem Ed show. We review quite a bit of that, but this year we are on track with the uh, approval of the most number of drugs in over 10 years. So it's a very vibrant area. Last week's show will uncover why and where you can take a look for that strength. So as we move on here, we can see the industrials. Consumer staples have come back as far as being a stronger area. And there are those that view that as being defensive. A lot of high yielding stocks are in the consumer staples grouping. However, the stocks that are really doing well within consumer staples are doing well for growth reasons. And because they are expanding their uh, packaged food goods uh, and so forth. So consumer staples. Then we have the S&P 500 utilities, another defensive area. But here I have SKYY. This is an ETF for cloud-based computer software. And I will tell you within 
technology, computer software stocks have far outpaced their peers. As of the close on Friday, computer software stocks have been up 40% year to date. And this is something I've been talking about week after week. We're going to drill down, take a look at how these computer software stocks perform during periods of trade war anxiety. There has been an impact on that grouping. We'll take a look at that. But here we have technology stocks that are for, that are next as far as the listing then consumer cyclicals. Consumer cyclicals hit another new high last week, another super strong area, and so on. Financials. Financial stocks are continuing to struggle with their primarily banking stocks are very predominant in that group. And banking stocks have really had a tough go of it here recently. There, we may see a pickup going forward, but for now, that is an area that is very clearly under performing the broader markets. So let's go ahead. I mentioned that I would be taking a look at stocks where there may be rotation within that sector. And with that rotation, you are going to potentially be able to get into stocks earlier in their advance. So let's go over here, take a quick peek at one of the industry groupings or sectors that we just looked at. And so today we are going to be focusing on the consumer discretionary sector. And this is as of last Friday, the close, this graph. And what I did want to point out is, again, that the sector did hit a new high in price. The reason it did that is participation has broadened out. So this is an area where there could very well be a potential rotation. So we are going to go get ahead and get into that. But I did want to point out that the consumer discretionary, particularly during the second half of this year, that it has had an explosive move. It's been a really vibrant, very, very strong area within the broader markets. And the reasons for that have been very, very sound. A lot of this, it was one of the first industry groupings to come back following this correction earlier in the markets, earlier in the year. And the reasons, again, were because of growth. The underlying stocks came through with very strong earnings. And we can even drop back further from there and take a look at consumer confidence. It's at a 19-year high. We have unemployment at a 19-year low. And then we have more recently seen wage growth. And you put that together with tax cuts. So what we are seeing is consumers are opening their purse strings. And hence, we are seeing consumer discretionary stocks benefit as they are seeing sales and that is driving their earnings. But not all areas within consumer discretionary have been participating. So what I have done here, this is a snapshot as of the close on Friday of a sector summary for consumer cyclicals. And I'll show you at the end how to get into this. But for now, we are looking at the sub groupings within the consumer cyclicals space. So these are areas where consumers with their discretionary ex excess capital, they can go ahead and purchase automobiles, footwear, gambling, hotels, and so forth. So when you're looking at these subgroupings, it's really quite powerful because you can then go ahead and hover over that tracking symbol and it will provide you with a snapshot view of that sub industry group. What I did want to point out to you is the fact that there have been very selective areas within consumer discretionary that have been pulling this grouping up. So let's go ahead and take a look. These are going to be areas that have been hitting a new high. This is as someone who follows the market super closely, I'm going to drill down here for you and show you. So here are home improvement retailers. This is going to be uh, Home Depot. Also, Restoration Hardware was a big winner in here. But you can see by this snapshot that it is hitting new highs. Let's take a look at another area. Specialty retailers have been really super strong. These are high-end retailers that specialize in a certain area. 
they have been very strong. Clothing and accessories is another area that has been quite strong. Now, there's a reason I'm going to these stronger areas first. Broadline retailers is another area that had been or has been really quite strong apparels. So really quite simply, the consumer discretionary space has been held up by home furnishings, apparel, and also by some of these broader retailers, so specialty retailers. But what I did want to point out to you, this is as of the close on Friday, we're looking at the one week performance. And there are some areas that are beginning to bubble up and we are potentially seeing a broadening out within consumer discretionaries. And the way that you can tell this as an investor is go ahead and keep an eye on the sector performances and the subgroupings. And really, it's not something that you need to do every day. I'm showing you the snapshot at the end of the week, and that is going to be powerful enough to inform you as to where the potential strength within a given strong sector is. So in so doing myself, I was able to take note that there in, no longer was I seeing these specialty retailers, home improvement up here at the forefront. Last week, other groupings started to essentially bubble up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the snapshot view of some of these subgroupings. And for my work, I want to key on on larger groups. So toys would not be so compelling. Auto stocks, while they appear to be turning, take a look at how down and out with this snapshot view that particular industry grouping is. And then durable household products as well. So as we drill down, I'm going to be on the lookout for subgroupings that are a little more advanced in their potential turn. So for today's work, that would take me to, as a for instance, the hotels. So hopefully you can see that it's been in a declining phase, but it is potentially turning. So what I'm going to do is take you to the next. So what you can do is simply click on to that hotel subgrouping. And from here, I've actually already done it. You can take a look at these subgrouping. These are the hotel groupings. And quite simply, I've sorted it by the scooter, S-C-T-R. And that scooter sorting is a very, very powerful uh, representation of where the strength is. So the higher the number, the better with this scooter. It is a longer term technical view of the stock's performance. But for my work, I do a lot of looking at charts every single week. I'm reviewing thousands of charts on the prowl for that next big stock. And then oftentimes I'll come to stockcharts.com and simply sort by scooter and those stocks will be there, the stronger names up in the forefront. So let's now drill down. We've identified a group within consumer discretionary that may be turning maybe bottoming. Now I have a view of the strength within that subgrouping. This is the hotel group. And let's go ahead and hover over again the ticker symbol. And we can see this first Belmond. It's a smaller company. Take a look at how it's just powering to new highs. That's not going to be quite as interesting to us today. Uh, Vail Resorts is another one hitting a new high. So as we drill down, uh, let's take a look at Choice Hotels, CHH. So we can simply click on to the name of that stock. And here we have a graphic view. This is a daily chart. For my work, I've overlaid the 10 day, which is the green line. The red is the 50 day. And then the blue is your 200 day simple moving average. On the top, I have the RSI, the relative strength indicator. And ideally, you do want this line to be above this dashed or net neutral. And also, you do want this RSI to be heading north so to speak. And then below we have the MACD, moving average convergence, divergence, another momentum indicator. And I, you do want that black line to cross up through the red. And then you also want it to be above this zero or net neutral. And that's going to indicate positivity. The 
graphic display, let's take a look at CHH Choice Hotels. What you want to see in a stock before considering entry is the price of that given stock. It needs to be a above your simple moving averages. So in this case, once the stock breaks up above both that 50 and that 10 day simple moving average, for my work, that's interesting, but most definitely I need to see the stock up above that longer term 200 day simple moving average. Just percentage wise, your odds are gonna be improved. If you just take that extra step, you might miss out on a potential 2% move, but over the longer term, you will be well served because we can see these other head fakes where it came up, failed, came up, failed. So this would be certainly more interesting to me from my work. So now we have the RSI is positive. MACD is positive, the price has broken up above these key simple moving averages. There's one more component that's going to make this stock compelling. That is, is this break back above these key simple moving averages, is that occurring on volume? And the reason you want to see volume is you want to see institutional support. These institutions are 80% of the volume that you see on your price chart. And if these institutions are involved, that is going to potentially give you the power to continue to propel the stock higher. So take a look here. This is a daily price chart. So last week, as this price broke back above, we did in fact get that volume characteristics. So overall, CHH could be a potential candidate. From here, I like to see stocks break out of bases, and that would be even more confirming. We are already seeing a lot in the way of positive characteristics. But when I talk about stocks breaking out of bases, what, you, what I am referring to is a stock that has potentially tried to hit a new high in price. It has failed whether it has sold off or consolidated as it comes back and approaches that prior high, you want to see that breakout on volume. So that's one particular candidate. Let's go ahead back to our list within the uh, hotel groupings. And what we can see going down further is another potential candidate would be, let's go ahead and drill down a little bit from here. But Taking a look here, you can see not every stock is a candidate. Some of these are just far too down and out, but we can take a look at, for instance, Hyatt Hotels is another one that could potentially be turning, but in fact, it's not. We are just getting way too much in the way of weakness. It has not broken up above those key simple moving averages. Your RSI is not confirming, nor is your MAC. So that is an exercise today in potentially uncovering candidates as we see rotation within a given group. We have other areas I want to get to today. So what I want to do is go ahead back to our presentation. And I talked about sub-industry groupings within the NASDAQ that are critical to the strength within that index. And here we are looking at cloud computing. And I think I made it clear that these computer software stocks have indeed been really a quite a source of strength. And so what I wanted to take a quick peek at here is how these computer software stocks have behaved during prior periods when the markets have been concerned about trade war fears. So as you know, for the, those of you that follow the markets closely, these trade war fears, they come and go as far as being impactful on the broader markets. But here are two periods where they did cause a sell-off. And oftentimes you will see these software stocks get hit a little bit harder. It's in line with momentum stocks. They go up faster, but they also have that predisposition to drop faster. We'll get into how you'll know when it's time to sell in a bit, but let's take a look at these other two prior periods as a guide should we see continued weakness this week in software stocks. So looking at a breakdown below these key moving averages, you can see 
that the index this period was able to hold support. Then during this be- latter July into the beginning of August, the software stocks did break down below that 50-day simple moving average. And from my work, that's often very uh, disturbing to, uh, is a word that could be used. But if you are in individual stocks that can withstand a break below that 50-day simple moving average, that is how you are going to uncover the stronger stocks. I do uh, produce a bi-weekly newsletter and software stocks are very well represented within the buy recommendation list. And those software stocks that were able to withstand this sell-off, and they were a number because I do traffic in high quality growth stocks, they were able to withstand this break. We were able to keep them on the list and they did advance. Those stocks that break down with their industry group or more can and will be your weaker groupings. But more importantly for our work today, you can see the recovery within. These software stocks have high growth numbers. If you can get in front of the higher quality names, you will be able to buy on the dip using history as your guide. Now let's go ahead and move on. We need to go ahead and take a look. This is E-Trade. What I wanted to point out to you are characteristics of stocks that are breaking down so that you can know that it's time to exit. E-Trade was on our suggested holdings list back here. We had a super great run with the stock, but now we need to uh, just take a look back because we did remove the stock as it started to deteriorate back here. And indeed, you can see what a good move it is to have a system in place. So the first negativity here is this RSI breaking down as the stock breaks below this key 10 day simple moving average. That's gonna be your warning shot across the bow, so to speak. Your MACD has a negative crossover black line down through the red and we can see an attempted rally, but it's not being confirmed by that RSI. Your RSI is trending downward as this stock tried to advance. Once the stock broke the 50 day, for my work, I am out because take a look at that huge volume. I talked about volume on the upside. It's really gonna be equally telling on the downside. So now we have this break again from my work, you are well served to exit. If you did hold on, this shorter term crossing down through the longer term, simple moving average is called a death cross. And then from here, your key moving averages begin to trend downward, quite negative. So these in these simple moving averages that were once acting as support now are acting as resistance. And you can see that on the way down, once the stock breaks below the 200 huge volume, hopefully you'd already exited the stock. Let's take a look. I have time to very quickly look at another stock. This one had also been on our list, a nice big winner in the healthcare IART. Once it begins to break down, pay attention to that RSI, the MACD. You can see the breakdown through this key 50 day simple moving average. In this case, I also wanted to point out that oftentimes these faster growing stocks can come back into favor. So you want to use the opposite as far as what characteristics you would look out for. Once we talked about this earlier, your price moves back above these simple moving averages, RSI trends positively, MACD, and you're getting a nice pickup here in the volume. So you can use these same indicators for the downside, reverse that when looking for potential turnarounds. That's all we have time for today. But for those of you that would like to find out more about my work or have any questions about anything we reviewed today, take a look at meminvestmentresearch.com. Thank you.